you can use the simple python library for your mathematics okay the areas could be in the mathematics could be the polynomials the calculus the discrete mathematics uh, matrices the statistics obviously and the geometry sections okay so let me write the things so the areas would be areas of working can be the very first i'll write statistics you go understand with stats okay the polynomials sorry the polynomials calculus the matrices geometry and we said discrete okay so more fields are there like in physics also you can use out there in vector algebras and all that there also you can use it right so, a lot of things are there to go through now installation part is something like uh, if you are using in windows and not using anaconda so you could have done it using a second yeah here you can write uh, sorry pip in your command you can write pip install simply that's it okay and if you have installed it then you need not to write out these things inside the code and because in my you will find this requirement already satisfied because i have installed it okay so you don't have to do if you are using in the anaconda it automatically comes there with the libraries all right so that is the installation part right and then you can import it now import mp as sp okay now what all the, the functions and the modules of the sp we need to go through that too so all these what do you see there why we are learning this is very huge library with lot of things so all these words or what do you strings you call as whatever you are seeing over there are the functions and the modules or you say the functions basically right so these are the functions of mathematics and the physics too right everything but comes inside uh, what comes under the simple okay we will be learning some of the functions will be very useful like the zeta zoo zeros and all the things okay that is the part i'm okay. going ahead just a second Uh, all right. Now, all through this, what you can do is like with a very simple thing. If I say for in Python, if we want to check whether a number is prime or not, how do we do? Anyone quickly tell me. If I want to check a number is prime or not, how will I check? Anyone from your side? Quick. very simple process no don't go with the libraries and all just if i know if i want to check a number is prime or not that's it we will check the number of factors for that send the number of factors Sir, we'll uh, run a loop in which we'll divide the number by the number of iterations. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, that can also do like in the way factoring so the numbers. Hmm. Okay. So uh, here in the library, it is like let's say if I take a number like fifty-six. Uh, so it is a prime number or not? No, sir. Hmm. If you want to check it, so we'll be using sp dot. It is a prime number or not? Fifty-six. We get the result. It is not prime number. So in this here, like with the mathematics related things or whatever the things, right? With the physics and a lot of things are there. You once you go through the things, you will find a lot of things. Right? So there are a lot of things to cover up here. Okay, in this. So we'll be going it through. Okay. 
so uh, the very first thing is whenever the, you are learning any modules check out the versions because some functions do not work in some other functions right uh, so other versions like in 3.9 if you talk about the python some of the uh, functions are working but in the uh, previous versions like 3.8 or 3.7 3.6 still the people are running that because they are better right so uh, there some functions do not work so things are there like in numpy some functions work in 3.7 but not in 3.9 like that okay all right so how do we uh, check the versions so we'll be printing it like print sp dot underscore underscore the version because we have imported it at sp right so sp dot underscore underscore and then version and run this so we are using 1.6.2 right now okay updated once right okay now going with the very basic things now you remember in mathematics if we say like i want to find the square root of 64 what is that 8.0 right if i go with here like 64 square root how will i write 64 to the power of 0.5 you get the results 8.0 or you write um, you import the math module that you all know right and then math dot sqrt of the 64 and again you get the result like 8.0 right there could be factors of finding the, the results what you can do uh, 64 to the power of 1 by 2 something like this right okay still you get the results Right, so there can be a lot of ways to find out the things. Just a minute, uh, one by two is fine. No, it's very fine. It's fine. Right. All right, so what we can do here is like if I want to find a square root of root, if I say cube root of two, if I, if I want to find the cube root of two, what would be the result in mathematics? Too? Can you find out? You can just write it like three cube root of two. I said sorry, so two to the power of. 1 by 3 you will write and you will be getting the 1.25 as the results right now it's the same thing if, if i want to present it symbolically right that is x multiplied by root 3 something like that so if, if it is a formula that root x plus root y if this is a uh, you can say an expression simple right if you are uh, if you are solving something and your expression comes like root x plus root y very simple so how will you write right so we'll do, do we say x star star at the rate of 1 by 2 at that time won't work because x is not defined so that is a symbol basically all right so in simply the very first thing is to understand a symbol what is a symbol right so symbols are nothing but a part of a simply where we actually write up all these a to z in capitals and smalls and uh, some combined words so that is a module of simply which is called as abc here right so before declaring any variable every time you have to declare that this is a symbol so to avoid that we'll be writing something else that will be going ahead okay so in simply there is this let us print the directory of sp dot abc uh simply has no attribute of abc hmm? just a minute what is not there Need to write it. Okay, uh, it's not working. SP is not working over there. Okay, so if I take it as simply dot abc, still is not defined. Just a minute. Actually, uh, the AVC contains all the uh, your symbols. Okay. Uh, all right. Still, I'll let you know how to write the symbols and all. We'll go ahead with this. We'll get it there. Okay. Ex.
the version. Okay, so symbols you need to declare, right? So what we do is from simply import the symbol. Otherwise, what do you need to do is you need to write that this is my x and I will say that this x is a symbol and I will be writing it like x. That's it. Now, whenever uh, symbol is not defined again, what is the problem? Done. Now, if I see x, you'll find this. Now, see the difference. So, if I write x like this, I'll get a symbol x. Okay, that is a math ML code. If you right click over there, you'll find math settings, math ML codes, and all. You'll be getting it there. Okay, so this is your code of math ML there. Okay, right, skips and all. Uh, just a second, see this. Okay, very fine there. All right. This is how it goes now. So if I say y, y is not defined. So similarly, you have to define this y as the symbols. Now, when you are taking a lot of symbols at once, like a, b, c, I need to define it. So I'll say a comma b comma c. So I'll say it as symbols. So that will be simply dot symbols, and then a, b, and c like this. Around this. Now, if you say A, we'll find a symbol. You write B, we'll find a symbol. Right. So, to avoid all these things, like every time writing and defining all the symbols, what we do is we import simply with three models, uh, with three of the lines. Okay. And what are those lines? Like import simply, then from simply import everything. That is S with signs. Okay. And from simply dot avc avc is all those like x y and z all we are right so import all the things that's it run this now and now it will work okay v3 and this time you write any of the things right when you write g you will find the symbol write k you will find the symbol even if you don't define right now l you will find the symbol okay that is how it works okay now if you say theta so theta is this or you say gamma, they'll find the things. Now, if I show you, I think it would work right now because there would be some problems at the time. So, if I say this is of uh, ABC, now I write yeah, this would work in. Okay, so uh, simply dot ABC has got all these things, right? That what I was talking about, like capital letters of A then any and deck dictionaries and then see all these things and again then from small a alpha b beta c chi and then d delta and all these things okay so till z zeta everything is there in the abc so you you basically don't need to define the symbol and symbols like when you are making things so in the algorithms we will be using all the things like summation of something absolute value of something so if you say absolute value of x so this is my x Absolute value of x would be something like abs, absolute value of, you need to learn of this, right? So, absolute value of x plus something over there and like that we will be making up the formula, right? That is a different part, okay? So, we need to understand the things right now, okay? So, let's say uh, equation I am talking about or if I say under root of 2 at that type, under root of 2. So, here you basically write it as a square root of 2. So, it represents you the square root, okay? Now, when it is a complete square, like 64, if I say square root of 64, so if I say square root of 64, you will be getting the actual value that is 8. So, when it is a complete square, you will be getting up the values. And when it is not a complete square, you will be getting it in the symbolic form. If I say root 8, so root 8, square root of 8, right? So, that will be 2 root 2. Using the simplification factorizations, all of other things, whatever that comes, right? Okay, so that is if I say root x plus root y, that would be sqrt. Now it is defined that root x plus root y, and that would be equal to something like that. We will be learning ahead. Okay, 
now let's learn the symbols uh, like expressions and all okay now expressions could be having something uh, this like root x plus root y and all those things right so if i say this is my expression one i will say x e1 so this is the expression e1 and there we printed e1 so this is the expression e1 if i say e2 so e2 would be like the uh, same things i'm taking over there okay and i'm writing using a negative sign So this is your e2. Now e3 could be a uh, e3 could be a expression which could be e1 divided by e2. That's it. So e3 could be this root x plus root y divided by root x minus root y. And then you understand like the way will be writing up like the whole formula will be derived over there like this. Okay. And that is a different part. We'll be going up ahead right later. Okay. Now let's say. If I say a plus b whole square, so I will be writing it as like a plus b and then whole square. Very simple, a plus b whole square, right? That could be a formula. It is a formula, right? Okay. Now, let's say if root x and root y are something like this, and even if I say that here is an equation where the value of a is equal to something. So this is, let's say, an equation 4, which is equal to a plus b whole square, right? And this is e4. This is your e4. Now I say a is value, a value is 2, right? So what will be the statement? What will be the expression? Yeah, you say if a is equals to 2, what will be the expression? Anyone, quickly. a equals to 2, what will be the expression? Yeah, anyone quick. A plus B whole square is there. B value is not defined. A value is 2. A is equals to 2. B is equals to B. Okay. Find A plus B whole square. Very easy question. Quick. Give the uh, expression. B square plus 4B plus 4. B square plus 4B plus 4. So, uh, I'll write it. I see some results over there. 2 plus b plus square, right? Obviously. Okay. So, what we'll do is basically we are substituting the value of 2 in the a. Yeah, that we are doing exactly right. So, we'll be using a function called as substitute. That is e4 dot substitute. In the expression 4, we need to substitute the value of a with 2, and then the results would be b plus 2 whole square. Right? And that can be expanded. Someone said expanded form of that. So we can expand it. That is a different part. If we need to expand, we'll be writing it there as this. And that would be b square plus 4b plus 4. And that can again be factorized if you want, like, right? So b will be common and then b plus 4 plus 1. Like we will get the factor of that. So a lot of functions are there to find the things, right? Again, we will be getting the same thing, okay? Just a minute, let me go back. Okay, so this was a substitute function, right? How you can substitute the things, okay? Now, if you go with the ABC, you need to define one by one with the else things and all, like if you go with a different expression, if you go with the trigonometric expressions, like sine theta plus cos theta, sine theta multiplied by sine theta, sorry. If I say sine alpha plus sine gamma, that would be a very easy equation to write down expressions, right? So, you can see, right? For something other, yeah, obviously. Okay? So, you see sine alpha plus sine gamma and all these things, right? Very simple things I am talking about right now, right? So, substitutions and all, okay? Okay, fine. Now, in the Python, guys, we have learned that there is something called as replication in with the strings. So, when we are multiplying, if we say 3 multiplied 2, we get 3, 3, right? But here with the same things, if we say that we need to find 3 multiplied by 2, giving the result as 6, how we will do? We need to convert the string in the integer, obviously. So, what we will do is... There is a function called as simplify. 
So you'll be writing simply phi of this 3 which is again multiplied by 2 giving you a result of 6 or you say integer of this 3. multiplied by 2 right both can be done easy ah, all right now if you have if you want to write up a fraction like if you say 1 by 2 something like that again you can go with the, even the same piece simplify so let's say 1 or let's say 3 by 2 plus 9 upon 5 right so what if we run this we get 33 by 10 but not exactly as what we want 3 by 2 plus 9 by 5 so for doing this what we have to do is we have to pass a parameter here that is equals to evaluation evaluate and that will be equals to false so if we write evaluation equals to false or evaluate equals to false this gives you that we just want to express the exact uh, expression what you have written inside the simplify right so simplify basically converts your string in the mathematical symbols okay for mathematical numbers you see about all right so we exactly want to write this as it is right so we don't want to evaluate this so you'll be just running this and you'll be getting 3 by 2 plus 9 by 5 so by default evaluations are always true that is it is always to be solved over there right now we are say that if we want to calculate a radius or uh, if we want to give an area of a uh, circle so we say input okay very quick so let's say float equals to uh, sorry R will be input. So we say input I and P T and enter the radius. All right. So this is the radius, and you would be printing. So whatever the area comes, so area will be equals to pi r square, right? That is comma pi multiplied by r square. That's it. So we'll run this and let's say radius equals to uh, 25.7 so the area would be 66.0.49.5 or you can just print this right so i'm not going to write all the things so again just writing this so if i say 20 45.7 is the radius so the uh, value would be 2088.49 pi and if you want to see the pi value we'll be just writing pi with uh, it oh yeah we want to see the value of pi we can just write with this right and we can find the pi value in okay all right like this you can go with that okay now the things can be written with s dot pi or capital s i think s if it is defined it's okay s dot pi all right or you can go with imaginary units the iota you want you know like the iota we have when discussing all the things right okay those things okay right. now uh, see guys if i say that if an expression is there which is equals to r by s that's it no r and s has been defined right now okay so this is the expression and if we want to evaluate it okay we want to evaluate this so what we will do is expression dot evaluate the function and we'll say the function right up to three digits okay and we'll say substitution will be equals to the r is equals to let's say 100 and the s is equals to let's say 3 so you'll get the output that is 15.2 and what is this 3 the three numbers okay if i say this is as four or five you get five numbers one two three four five that is clear to everyone hundred by three you'll be getting it this like this okay like this i think it's clear to you okay all right and x functions let me see over there
like if we say with the questions, if we say uh, an expression, where we can have uh, like x square y. Plus four x y z plus four z y square. Right. So if we look onto the expression, it looks something x square z plus four x y z plus four y square z. Exactly, or something like. So we need to factorize this. Like it's very simple. We need to factorize this. What we'll do is using the factor function. Factorize the expression. Oh. So that is z common and x plus y, x plus two y whole square. Very simple. In the terms of the ex. Okay. And if we want to get the factor terms, you can even get those things. Z and then x square plus 4xy plus 4y square and then it is giving you the factor. Okay. And if you want even the factor list, you can go with that too. It will give you z1 then x plus 2y plus 2. Okay. So x plus 2y whole square is there. You can see the things x plus 2y whole square is there and z plus 1 and then 1 is right so one at the side and z one is at the side and then x plus two y is the one list so if we do factorizations you will find it better the things okay so things are easy out there find out okay. now if i say an expression of six that is like x square plus x plus one okay now and e7 as x plus 1. So if I say e6 divided by e7, it gives you x square plus x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. Right? Okay. Now if we want to factorize this or cancel this something, what would be the result I will be getting? Or let's say if it would be 2x would be better. So let's say it to be a cancel or factorize, what else you cancel could also work, right? So cancel e6 divided by e7. What's the result we are getting? E x plus 1. Okay, x will be common and then x plus 2 and then x plus 1 and it will be cancelled, right? So x plus 1 will be answer. Okay. This would be the cancel of this. Or you can say x plus 1 whole square that would be cancelled over there. That would be better right or if you want to write up some fractions in some different form using in the numerator some of the denominators over there to we can write that too also right so i'm just showing you the ways of writing up these things you can do this could help you out in this total uh, course models okay uh, we're having a test of this also sir i lost my connection can you just tell me what the cancel function does Cancel function basically, uh, see what you do is what you'll write x, x square plus 2x plus 1, it would be x plus 1 whole square, x plus 1 whole square, right? So x plus, yeah, 1, yeah. X plus 1 in the numerator and in the denominator, it just cancel out the things. So, sir, it simplifies it basically. Yeah, simplifies you can go with that way. Simplify function would also work as the same. So, if this is a Expression e seven it will come as like a three x minus if I zoom in there you can see it better. Right? So let me zoom in. So three x minus two by x minus four plus one by x. Right? One by x. Or one by something like one by sine x, cos x, anything will be giving you the results, right? So you'll be getting questions to solve actually. You just see the way of writing because you'll when you'll be getting questions you have to solve those things right and we say factorials of uh, some numbers at that time like we'll be using uh, what is the chart? Wait. 
So, uh, like factorials, when we talk about factorials, we'll be discussing it like factorials of, if we say factorial of b, so that would be factorial very quick, right? Factorial of 0, obviously it is 1 multiplied by 5, that is like 5 and then multiplied by 2, 25, okay, results are there. And factorial of x divided by factorial of something and then again factorial of that, you can do it, right? okay? Double factorials, triple factorials and all. That would work out better. All right. So these all are the things what can be done. Okay, and that can be simplified even. Okay. So if I say an ex expression, very easy one. Okay, that is like. Uh, do we have this? So if the expression is something like uh, x square plus uh, let me see this. What I can see here is it has x square plus x plus thirty four square minus x plus sixty four square. Hmm. Let me check it. X square plus x square thirty four square. And all the now, if you have been asked to simplify this, okay. So, what will the result? If anyone can tell. Okay. What we will be using is just simplify this e eight. See the results, and this is x square minus sixty x minus two seven zero zero. And the simplification of this could be even factorized, I hope, and that could be done using factor of this one and the result is x minus 90 and x plus 30. So that will be equals to 0 and could be getting x results, right? If we say solve this, so the results would be, <coughs> sorry, results would be x as minus 30 and 90. Right, so better you will be getting the questions, right, to get out the values of some expressions or like not the easy expressions, right, and just showing you the way of writing the things. Or in the, in the algorithms, if you need to find out the uh, answers in some values, you have to use this, right. So that is why it is has been meant for, okay, going ahead. So it makes things very easy actually when you go through. Now in trigonometry, uh, we have a basically a, a module for trigonometric pair. If I can get the directory of that, it gives you the mod. The mod name simply says uh, something is missing. Okay. See, in the trigonometry, like if I say there is an expression you need to solve around sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, very simple. It's one. Here you can work with two of the functions, simplify or prism. Functions, what I say is two functions are the most important for the trigonometry. Prism. Yeah. Basically, that is called as trigonometric simplifications. Okay. Or you can go with simplify, and sometimes you have to use also trig expand. Oh, sorry, expand and trigonometry. Sometimes you have to use this. Okay. Done. So if this is an equation, let's say e nine. 
and this is an equation in that. Right, so I need to solve the C9, so I'll be using my like new to exam 2. Solving this E9, we get the answer as this one. Now we want to write the sign squared because till now what we are learning, till now what we have seen is there that we have the LHS part and the RHS we are coming as the answer. Now what if I mean to represent this the LHS and the RHS at once? Like if I show print this E9, E9 is equals to 1, can be this, can it could be there, right? Because E9 is an invalid keyword for an argument for printing, right? Because E9 has some values even, right? So if I say this sine square theta plus cos square theta is equals to equals to 1, can I write this that E9 is equals to this, 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 this equals to 1? No, because there is act obviously an operators there that is previously of a person, right? So we cannot write it. So what we need to do is we need to write an equation at that time. Just just till there it was an expressions, right? Now it would be an equation where you are having LHS as well as the right hand side. For that we will be using the EQ function that is called as expressions. Now we say E9 is equals to 1. It will represent as sine square theta or sorry sine square alpha plus cos square alpha is equals to 1. EQ stands for the equation. Okay. So if I say you that like if I ask what is the value of uh, x plus y whole cube. Yeah, anyone quick. So expand could work for expanding of the things and it can also work in case of like you do with the binomial theorem center. x plus y to the power of 30 or x plus y to the power of something you will get the results even by right? whatever the things. So these are basically used for the mathematics things right. So that why we use here like in now now you see whatever that you have seen here in the machine learning uh, with the data science also guys right. And with the deep learning guys also like when you go with the networks and all neural networks there it is not very much important right but when you are learning with the regressions and all like things with the very first thing in machine learning you go with the feature selection methods okay and you say it are like you can go with the things as uh, in regression we say it to be what is that, what is selecting your weights right so what are weights exactly these are weights what are the numbers we are getting 4060 27,405 all these are weights right and then uh, what this x and y y and all these we say add to be the features right so according to the features giving the weights and all right so that is very much useful okay so this time of uh, these type of equations will be coming out there too okay i'm going ahead okay that is how all right uh, okay now apart from this there would be functions, there would be integrals, there would be uh, differentiations, right? The questions would come like p square man, minus p square plus 1 and then proving it to be equals to something. Like whatever they, in the 10th mathematics you might have done, right? All the things, okay? Then com combinatorials of those things, okay? Like if I say, see guys, very easy. Expanding your factorials, you know, like if I say that E is equal, so okay, expression 10, let's say, what is that? Expression 10 is equals to, so if I say this is factorial of this x, okay, divide by factorial of x minus 10. So my e10 looks like this. Factorial of x by x minus 10. Very simple. Okay. Now if I use this combinatrix here, so it would work as the permutation combinations you know, right? Okay, that is combinatrix simplifications of E10 would be giving you a result of this x 
and then x plus x minus 9 minus 8 minus 7 minus 6 minus 5 like if you if there is someone who don't exactly know what exactly is factorial you want to declare you want to learn make him learn like how factorial works what are the things this is how you'll be making and you can say eq is equals to this or you can say this uh, factorial of factorial of your or you can say this e10 would be equals to this and you can run this that is the x factorial by x minus 10 factorial could be equals to this now i think you guys would be better making it like quite simple right you might be understanding what exactly it is is it boring kind of thing because many a times uh, student feel bored here in the simply anyone feeling bored out there it might be from those who are not from the mathematics kind of See, it's very easy actually it makes things very simple so, recently two months ago i was taking a batch of iit bombay there the students actually solve the questions right uh, uh, using this uh, simply so there was actually we were solving the questions from this j main setting it makes things come very easy you haven't seen till now the integration differentiations and the limits and all logarithmics, right? So bars and all a lot of things are being left. Okay. So going ahead. So in logs also you find a lot of things. Log i plus log j, combinations of log, writing up the equations, very different things. So in log guys, you need to make things better. Like in log, you know, uh, things would be real, right? The alphabets you whatever you use should be real right the real you understand not exactly the real are not, right? so let's try it there you will find it okay so in log what we need to do uh, we need to define the things before writing up there okay so log of x plus log of y then going with the differentiation and all so log differentiation integration we'll be doing tomorrow okay and then we'll be going with the con uh, questions too okay so you can understand because the next very next day you'll be having a test with the simply so here uh, if we say infinite how we do write infinity in python many a times infinite that's not for infinity here what you do is you write double o small double o that's it this is your infinity right if i say the range of your like in the graph of your sin x or cos x using the graphs, using the ranges, if I say very quick um, an expression, right, or if I say an expression like sin x tan x, this is an expression sin x tan x, so what would be the differentiation of this if we can differentiate, yes, it's very simple, right, this would be the differentiation, tan square x plus 1, then sin x plus plus x plus minus x, plus one, right, with the this x or you write with the de de derivative if you want to write at this right like derivative of this very easy actually but many times mostly the so student go, don't go with this functions so derivative of this gives you the by dx of sin x of this okay and um, if i say integral of like sum e6 there, no, e6 is not there, e5 is there, yeah, sorry, okay, I am writing wrong, okay. e10, so integral of x factorial by x minus 10 factorial, and you can give, guys, you know, you can give the uh, things like, with the x, upper limit as infinite, lower limit as minus 1, whatever things, right, using the things, it would be better, very easy, when we go with the things. Uh, these things we'll be learning tomorrow how to set the limits how to go with integrations different differentiations okay till then you go through today you go through the things what you have learned with a lot of functions you have learned today right so go through once okay uh, right so let me stop your video